So there are several ways to model weirs inside of a 2D domain in HEC RAS, and these have kind of been added kind of incrementally over the years. So we're left with you know, several choices if you want to do this, but there really are like right and wrong ways to do this in certain situations. And this turns out to be one of the things that I see in models that I often have comments on and often think can be done better. So we made a user guide and I want to make a little video that kind of walks users through the different choices they get to make. And so here I just have a very simple model. It's a longitudinal flume. It's actually the size of approximately the Missouri River. Um, but I went in and I put in a two meter structure in the middle of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at two flow conditions. We've got you know a 300 CMS and a 100 CMS flow condition. And if we look at how the water surface elevations develop over these, you know, we've got a pretty steep drop over the 100, and then we essentially have a backwater condition over the 300. And so let's actually look at the profile line. Let's look at the water surface elevations over the profile line. And what you'll see doing this just with the 2D equations, you haven't added any structures yet. We've just added the channel mod and we're just using that as part of the terrain. You know, the 2D model will give us this submerged curve and that actually turns out to be relatively correct. But the 100 CMS flow, it actually is essentially weir flow. It computes supercritical flow at the crest. And so actually the 2D equations don't do very well in these kind of waterfall free flow conditions. And so we're have to, gonna have to go in and model this differently. And so what we're gonna do, first of all, is we're gonna go in and put in a 2D structure. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to save the geometry as, and we'll call this add structure. And we're just going to make sure that's associated with the right terrain. And then I'm going to come in here to add structure. I'm going to start editing and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a 2d connection. And so we'll come in and for now, I'm just gonna draw it down the center line. This isn't always where you wanna draw it, but let's just go in and draw it down the center line. And it'll ask us the width, that, that width's pretty large. Let's make it 20. Um, and then what type? Well, there are actually a number of things you can do here. There are some very cool things coming. Uh, bridge pressure weir is gonna be out very soon. Um, and then you can do a 1D bridge, but we're gonna leave that for another video. This is just a weir. There's no low cord bridge flow. So we're just gonna use this first one, the weir gates and, and culvert outlet. And then the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to enforce that as a break line. And so we'll come in and we'll say, you know, enforce, we only have one, so we can enforce all of them right now. And it'll go in and enforce that as a break line so that those conform to it. And one thing I might do here, you can see that that doesn't line up very well just around the edges. So I might come in here and I might edit the break line properties, give it a near spacing of 25, which is the spacing, but then just give it, you know, a bunch of near repeats. So then when I enforce it, it gives me a better mesh right around the structure itself. So then we're gonna stop editing and save. And then I'm gonna open up the geometry editor because I want to come in here and I wanna open up this SA2D connection. If we, if we open up the new geometry, the add structure geometry, and we go zoom in, you'll see our structure right here along the channel mod that we made. So I'm gonna, select the storage area 2d connection and we have a bunch of decisions to make here you know this is where we can breach or we can add culverts and gates we're not going to do any of that stuff right now the main thing that i want to look at is this right here the overflow computation method and that is what equation are we going to use in order to decide what kind of flow we want over this structure and so if we choose the normal 2D equation, I think a lot of people prefer this because, well, it has the word normal in it. So, yeah, maybe that's the thing you should generally do. And it's 2D. It's a 2D equation. So it just sounds better. And so generally, this is, I think, what some people use. But if you choose this in this current situation, you're actually going to get the same result because all it's going to do is it's going to look at the terrain underneath this and it's going to use that for the cell faces and use the 2D equations. Well, how is that different from not having that there at all? It's not. And so if the model performs poorly as we pass through critical depth and you know have a waterfall condition, it's not going to perform any better for adding the structure. 
and this is the thing you have to understand about making this decision is that you know we're solving the 2d equations those equations are momentum equations and as long as you've got a tail water down here you can balance the momentum over these cells but as soon as you kind of lose this tail water control as soon as you go into a plunging or a free fall condition well then the momentum equation doesn't really work for you anymore the the assumptions of the momentum equation are broken and what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up over computing the velocity and that over computation of the velocity is going to result in a lower water surface elevation and more flow over the structure and so if you're in this kind of free fall condition well in that case you're going to want to choose the weir equation and so for this lower flow event i'm going to choose the weir equation here and then i'll come in here and i'll save this as weir equation um, 100 and I'll go ahead and run and this takes about 15 seconds to run and that actually took a little bit longer to run for a couple of reasons one because you know the weir equation isn't computed implicitly within the matrix it's an e extra solution so it has to iterate and then also it's just a little bit less stable because it's not in the implicit matrix and in this simulation we did a few more iterations to get through so there's a little bit of a cost to that but now if we go look at the result here if you compare these two you can see that now the water surface elevation for the weir is higher because remember i said that the momentum equations are going to over predict velocity through the weir and they're going to just push too much water through and so the correct answer is going to be higher and the one dimensional weir equation even though it's simpler because it simplifies the result it ends up being more accurate it's so that'll give us this higher headwater now there's still a problem with this model though does this profile look stable to you yeah it's not and it is computing the higher backwater than the 2d equation but that's almost incidental in this case because neither of these profiles are particularly stable so we are going to want to improve this model in another way why don't i show you the model and give you a couple of seconds to think about what the problem is When we're solving the Weir equation, the Weir equation is a very simple equation. It's Q equals CLH to the three halves. Uh, so the actual width of the Weir isn't in that equation. That's actually built into the C. And so it's just the length times the head differential. And the head differential is the head water versus the tail water. But where do we compute the tail water here? Well, the headwater is in these cells upstream of the structure, and the tailwater is in these streams downstream of the structure. But look at where this is lining up with our structure. Is this a true tailwater condition? It isn't. It's like still right on the structure. We actually want to adjust the way that we model this so that our downstream cells you know, reflect better the downstream boundary condition. Okay, so I'm going to actually do this again, and I'm going to go to my original result here and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to say um, downstream edge structure and so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a structure again I'll come in here I'll say SA2D connections and I'm going to try to draw it right along this line again be a little bit more careful with that this time and we'll give it a width this time i'll give it a width of five why does that matter well if i'm using the weir equation remember the equation is clh to the three halves there's no w in there this number doesn't actually matter we're not using this anywhere um and you'll see why i chose that uh, in a bit now we've actually added the weir to the downstream edge of this obstruction now this obstruction is relatively uniform across so it works out that way but if you think about what's going to happen now well now we're going to use these cells as the headwater and we'll use these cells as the tailwater that's just going to work out a lot better and we will enforce this connection and that kind of gives us an awkward enforcement so i'm going to go in and i'm going to you know change the properties and give you know make 25 and make 20 near repeats again so that when i enforce this it gives me a more aligned cells and here it is now and you can see that i kind of gave it that artificial width because that width is you know just really a plotting function and we'll come in here to the storage area 2d connection and make sure we're using the weir equation which we are and then we'll come over and set up our run and 
and I'm going to run. And so now if we go look at that result, now that we've actually, we're actually using the downstream cell as the tailwater boundary condition, now we're actually getting a good result of what's going on here. We're seeing that we're actually computing the waterfall flow or the plunging flow over the structure, but we're not using this artificially high tailwater condition. So using the 1D Weir equation actually gives us more stage over the 2D equation, but both of them were kind of you know artificially constrained by this tailwater boundary condition. And so when we do it right, when we actually use the the Weir equation um, that actually accounts for the plunging flow, but also use the downstream tailwater condition, we get a much better answer for that condition. And so the basic question you have to ask yourself when you're choosing a modeling option is, you know, is it a waterfall? Does it go through critical depth? Does critical depth drive the situation? Because if it doesn't, if you're comfortably in a backwater situation, then the 2D equation is going to be better. It, you know, you're going to be able to solve momentum over the whole domain, and this it's going to give you a good result. The Weir equation actually performs actually doesn't perform particularly well when it's submerged in a 2D situation. But as soon as you go from this condition where you can solve the 2D momentum equation all the way through to some sort of free fall flow, then you're going to have to switch to the Weir equation. But when you switch to the weir equation, you're going to have to be pretty careful to manage your tailwater to make sure that you have the right tailwater so that you don't artificially inflate the headwater. Here are the final results for both the 300 that is submerged and the 100 that is not. The submerged uses the 2D equations. You can do that either with the structure or without. And then the non-submerged uses the weir equation and carefully manage the tailwater boundary condition. So we wrote a user's guide on this that goes into more detail and has some cool illustrations that can help you walk through this and some case studies. But this is one of the biggest errors I find in models. The differences in some of these choices can result in you know, several feet of water surface elevation upstream. So it's really important to A, select the right equation and B, carefully manage the headwater and tailwater conditions when you do. Uh, my name is Stanford Gibson. I'm the sediment transport specialist on the HEC RAS team. And this video was funded by the HHNC SET program.